my daughter is turning 11 this month and like i stated in my last video she's actually at the age where she's telling me the styles that she wants i don't know who told her at school about goddess braids but she came home asking me for some goddess braids and here we are for this video i really want to break down how i do my medium size some braiders large knotless braids and i really want to get into details on the amount of braids that i put in each row and so you guys can get a gist of styling when you are styling of course you have to consider the size of the person's head that you're doing of course i'm doing my daughter so she's gonna typically have a smaller head than most however this is typically what i do for most of my braid styles the first thing I want to highlight is where I put my first part. So now you want to look where the tip of her ear is and the back of her neck and that length right there. You want to split that in half. And that is where I typically put my first part. And within that first row, I want to do three braids. As I move on, it's basically going to be showing you guys how we accomplish the brick layering of these types of braids. Before we move forward, I want to show you guys what I use. This is the braid stand. You can get it from Amazon or the hair store. It has that little thing that sticks to anything you put it on and it's plastic. So those prongs do not break as easily as the wooden one. The next thing I use is Shine and Jam. You can get this from the hair store, or Amazon. My edge control for the edges, my precision comb, which you guys know I go extra hard for because this is the reason for my parts, hands down. So the next thing I use is my braid band. I hate dipping my fingers into the jam constantly or even taking away time from it so that helps tremendously the next thing i use is the rua hair i love this hair is soft and it comes in a number six no hair is coming in a number six but that one and this is a number four you guys know my daughter has a special type of hair color and it's hard to find anything that goes with it so now the milky way hair that i just showed you guys is going to be a natural human hair it, it's very costly however i i don't want to use synthetic hair because it's going to knot up we're going to be going to the beach getting in water and i don't want her hair to be a hot mess from synthetic hair so i chose to use human hair and the, honestly there's nothing special about the milky way why i bought it it was really just a color thing like i couldn't find anything to match the color and as you can see for that it doesn't have any weft on it so that helps tremendously not having to cut a bundled hair or cut the weft off so i do recommend using human hair and uh getting the micro braids type of hair that has no weft on it so anyways moving on like i said i'm adding the human hair to these braids as i go and i'm just she's holding it putting her to work and i'm just pulling it out and i put maybe like four or five in each braid so that it's nice and full and it looks beautiful and you know it has some density to it Now, when I get to the end of the braid, I typically braid, put one last um, set of curly hair into it and I braid it out as far as I can go. And then I put some glue on it and that excess braiding hair, I'm going to cut that at the end so the next row that i do is going to be at the tip of the ear so i'm going to go from the tip of the ear to the other side tip of the ear so this is my uh second row and in this row i'm going to put four braids so now this is how you get the brick layering is the first row has three the second row has four and the third row is probably going to have about five and then once I get there, I'll explain more to you guys, but I'm just cleaning up my parts. I use the shine and jam and I run it across my rough draft part first. And then I go in and I use the precision comb to clean that part up. And this is the last braid on the second row.
as you can see as i'm going i always want to add some shine and jan and this is where the braid band comes in handy because if i had to dip my fingers every time in the jar to get um some and i hate when the product is on the back of my hand so it's just better for me to have the braid band and have the product on there and it's just quick and easy to get to it as i'm going so now this is the first row is three braids the second row is four braids and as you can see the brick layering is where you uh each braid falls in between the row below it so the braids aren't falling on top of each other but they're falling next to each other if you guys get what i'm trying to say if you think about brick layering you know how that looks it's not like a straight line on top of each other is kind of like off y'all don't don't try me you know? <laughs> y'all already know i find it's a struggle to find the proper words to say sometimes but i'll be trying to help y'all but you know just y'all get what i'm trying to say so for the next row i'm going to be doing four braids so that when that falls on top of the row with five braids it also falls in between them and not on top so this is going to eliminate the spaces or seeing too many spaces in the hair brick layering makes the hair look fuller and not so spaced out um where you can see all the parts so your aim is to put your vertical parts to meet the middle of the box below it. So if you're parting down, you want to end up in the middle or meeting the middle part of the box below it. So what I'm doing now is adding hair to each braid and that is called feeding in the hair. Uh, this is adding the extension hair to her natural hair to give it length and thickness so when i use the term feed in or um to break this down so you guys understand where i'm coming from i'm feeding in the hair into the braid um to make it undetectable and to make it look natural so i want to break down how many feedings i use in each braid to make it the length i want uh, the thickness that i want and to just make each braid proportional and consistent So um, like I showed you guys before, I braid down, I add um, about four strands of the human hair, four to five strands of the human hair. And this is the last one that I'm adding. And this one I do not pull out. I braid it down because I want it to be at the end of her braid so i want the curly hair to end it so what i'm using now is nail glue and i'm going to glue the end together you can tie a knot if you want i'm sure there um i've showed you guys before in my other videos how to tie the knot at the end however for this style i'm going to be using the nail glue to do so So when it comes to feeding in the hair, I want you guys to know that I use about four feed-ins. So of the synthetic hair, the braiding hair, I use four feed-ins. And when I start, I want to use my thickest because my daughter's hair is finer and I don't want the braids to look too skinny. I can't match the the thickness of her hair with the feeding so i have to go a little bit thicker so now the first and the second feeding that i put is going to be my thickest and then the third one would the third and fourth one would be a little bit smaller and this is going to equal out the legs of the braid so if you guys follow me the first and second feeding that i put in are thick feedings and you know there are three legs so one is going to be a little bit smaller once you um feed it in and then so i add a smaller amount to the last two so overall for each braid i only add four feed ins and then i start to add the natural hair if you wanted a longer length of course you can add more feed ins as you go down to make the length of the braid longer but i don't want it to be longer because she you know she is a child even though it's still going to end up way longer than i needed it to be but that's just how it ended up and 
that's how she liked it. Her dad is fine with it. I'm fine with it. So I know you guys, some of you guys are going to have your panties in a bunch about how long her hair turned out for you know, a little girl. However, like, I don't believe hair makes you more beep beep. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's my baby. I know her best. So she's not going to turn into a different person overnight because her hair is long. And I think some of you guys need to be mindful of that when you write those type of comments but anyways so i'm finished with her hair and now i'm just putting in some mousse i showed you guys the mayel mousse which i love that mousse like especially for natural hair and these curls and clippings that i've been using it really defines the curls and it smells so good so i'm spraying it with some water i'm brushing it out and then i'm going to put the mousse on it to define the curls and it's late, so we're going to sleep and we go wake up in the morning because I don't have time for it to dry. So this is her the next day after school. And this is how they look. The curls are defined. It's human hair, so it doesn't have like a, a crazy defined curl texture. It's kind of loose, wavy, curly. It's doing what it wants to do. And she loves it. It's nice. Like I said, it's a little bit longer than I would like, but we're, we're all okay with the length. I don't think it changes who she is as a person. And you know this is how it looks it looks so cute i love this hair so i went and got it she wanted me to be twins with her so i went and got this same style and you guys have probably seen that already by now